Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into differential equations and now look at further into predator prey systems, which is where I started my last video, so check that out. And go over example one and go over part one of example one, which will go over parts A, B, and C of this example. And in my next video, I'll go over D and E. So stay tuned for that. I just want to save some time because it's pretty extensive example so I'll do it in parts. So before I get further, uh, like always you can download these exact notes in the video description link below and also subscribe via email for uh, my email newsletter and it's it works better than the e YouTube email subscription and uh, also donate to mes.fm slash donate if you like my videos. So let's get further into this. So example states suppose that populations of rabbits and wolves are described by the Lutka Volterra equations, which I went over in my last video on predator prey systems. Here's the link. We'll get to that in a bit. With the constants k equals 0 0.08, a equals 0 0.001, r equals to 0 0.02, and b equals to 0 0.00002, or four zeros and two, and assume the time is measured in months. And let's look at part A, which states uh, find the constant solutions, otherwise called the equilibrium solutions, and interpret the answer put a period there. So first thing we'll do is let's just recall those equations. So recall the Lutka Volterra equations and you can click this link and you can go here just close this add click the show more and then you can see the uh, in, in the video description of every video you can see the notes and, and view and download them. Yeah, so here they are in PDF form. This is my last video. I just want to get to the equations to show you. So these are the equations I went over. These are the Lutka Volterra equations. You can see that there. So dr over dt equals to kr minus arw, and then dw over dt equals to negative rw plus brw. So let's just write these down. So recall them. So the uh, so for the rabbits, we have dr over dt. The growth rate is equal to k times r. So it's growing proportionally to its, uh, the growth rate is growing proportionally to its population size, but then it's subtracted by, and then a is proportionally, a proportion constant for this one. And it's, it's decreasing based on its encounter with wolves, so uh, determined by this rw term. So the more wolves there are, and then this decreases the amount of rabbits there are. And then so in, these are interlinked together with the wolf population growth rate. So the wolf population is dependent on that, on the rabbits. So this is initially decreasing at a rate of uh, negative r, r and then proportional to its size, because there's no, if there's no rabbits, it's always decreasing, but then it increases with the constant b times it by its encounter with rabbits, or the number of rabbits given by this RW. So it eats rabbits, so that's why it increases the population size, decreases if there's nothing there. Rabbits is the other way around. It increases when there's no wolves, but decreases when there are wolves. So let's plug in our values now. So K is 0 0.08, A is 0 0.001, R we're dealing with 0 0.02, and then four zeros and two for B. So we have now for this is DR over DT is equal to point 0, 0.8 r minus point zero zero one r w and then this this equation here we get d w over d t is equal to negative point zero two I believe it's zero two and there's two zeros on the on the a so now we have w plus now four zero so one two three four two r W. So we have a giant equation on the right side. Yeah, so now that we have these equations set up, let's look at part A, which again, part A states, find the constant solutions, otherwise known as the equilibrium solutions, and interpret the answer. So, so both R and W will be constant if both derivatives are constant. In other words, the growth rates are both zero, so they're not growing, that's the only way it has to be constant. In other, in other words, the populations are not growing or decreasing when the derivative is zero. So what we do is what we, yeah, what we end up having to have is RW is equal to zero. The growth rate of, of the rabbits is zero. It's not growing. And the wolf population growth rate is not growing. So W prime is zero. So for the first one, we have 
r prime is equal to zero. Yeah, before I write zero, so r prime is the same thing as writing dr over dt. That's just a different way of writing the derivative. And now this equals to this 0 0.08r minus 0.001rw. And now we set this equal to zero to find out. And when we do this, what we can do is factor out the r's. So we get a r, and then we have this 0 0.08 minus 0 0.001, and then the w, so we factored out the r's. This equals to zero. Yeah, so now from this, what we can see is that, well, we have two options to make it equal to zero. It's either this r is equal to zero, or this whole term equals to zero. And we'll, we'll analyze what happens when you do either one in a bit. Before I get to that, let's look at the w prime. So w prime is equal to, well, dw over dt. And this equals to, let's write this neater. This equals two, and then go over and up here. So this negative 0 0.02, and then this is four zeros and two. Negative 0 0.02 w plus, and then four zeros. One, two, three, four, and then this is r, actually this is a two, then r w. r w, and then this equals to zero. Set that equal to zero, remove the w's. We have now a w and a minus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.0000, 0 0, and then this is r. So this equal to zero. So yeah, so now again, uh, we have uh, the scenario where this either equals to zero, to make it the whole thing equal to zero, or this term equals to zero. Yeah, so now what we get is, well, two kinds of answers, and that is, well, a trivial answer, or a trivial solution is given when r equals to zero and w equals to zero. And that's basically, if we set this r equal to zero, then what we get is this whole thing goes to zero, but then r is zero, so then w times negative 0 0.02 is also equal to zero. In other words, w has to be zero, because again, you have to solve these simultaneously or at the same time. Same thing if you have w equals to zero, then this w is zero, and then you have r times 0 0.08, so r has to be zero as well. So again, so then that's one trivial one is when they're both equal to zero. And this makes sense because if there are no rabbits or wolves, the populations are certainly not going to increase. Yeah, they're just not existent or they're extinct. So they're obviously not going to um, expand. So the other constant solution, which is the non-trivial, is when we look at these two terms. Here, set these two equal to zero and find w and find r. So yeah, the first one is we look at over here. So what we get is well, a 0 0.08 minus a 0 0.001 w, and let's set this equal to zero. So what we get now is, well, we could rearrange this, move this 0 0.001 w on the other side, divide by 0 0.001 on this, and what we get is a w equals to 0 0.08 divided by uh, 0 0.001. And now we could simplify this further. We can get rid of a zero. This just equals to 0.8 divided by, let's yes, just cancel like that, uh, divided by 0 0.01. And now to expand this further, we can multiply this by, well, move this over a decimal place to the right twice, one, two. And so in other words, we multiply by two zeros. So 100 at the bottom is so 100 divided by 100 so that we get this over one, two. And this goes to one. So we get a, well, one, two, there's a zero. So we get an 80, just to simplify it. Let's write this a bit neater. Whoops. Yeah, so that's 80 on that side. And now let's look at the second part is over here. Yeah, so here we have this negative 0.02 plus 0 0.0000 r equals 0. So we get this uh, point, negative 0.02 plus 0 0.00002 r equals a zero, and then we can move the, this 0 0.02 on this side and then divide by this whole term. So we get a r equals 2.02 over 0.1234, 2. And again, we can cancel a zero just to make it a bit easier to look at. So 0 0.2, then 1, 2, 3, twos. And again, we can move this decimal place 1, 2, 3, 4 just to get rid of all the point all the decimal places in the denominator, then that means we multiply this by four zeros. So one, two, three, four, and then this is one, two, three, four. So I'm not changing anything. And we move this one, two, three, 
four, so this means we get, we move one, two, three, so we get one, two, so we get a zero, zero, zero. So in other words, we get a 2,000 over two there, because we move the decimal place. So this becomes 2,000 over two. The twos cancel, this just becomes 1,000, like that. Yes, yeah, so what we get is now, well, the equilibrium solution, uh, the equilibrium populations of the solution consist of 80 wolves and 1,000 rabbits. So that's the wolves, the rabbits, like that. So when we have this, they're going to be constant, and they're not going to increase or decrease for either population. Yeah, this means that 1,000 rabbits are just enough to support a constant population of 80 wolves. And also, yeah, there are neither too many wolves, which would result in few rabbits, nor too few wolves, which would which would result in more rabbits. So this is interesting stuff that uh, yeah, that people could calculate to see in a forest how many uh, how many animals you would need, or how many of a different population you would need to counter act any growth rate of, of the other animal, which is pretty interesting. So let's look at part B right here. So part B states, use the system of differential equations to find an expression for dw over dr. So this is the uh, rate of growth of the, um, or this is the rate of change of the wolf population in terms of the rate of change of the rabbit population as opposed to time. This is how much it grows based on how much the rabbit population grows or changes. That's pretty interesting stuff. So yeah, to do this, well, what we could do is use the chain rule, which is pretty uh, interesting. What we could do is, well, we want, we want dw over dr, write this d better, and, and basically this is what we want. Put a colon and recall that the function w and r, the, the wolf population and the rabbit population are interdependent on each other so they both are dependent on each other. What that means is when we take, let's say, the wolf population dt, um, dw over dt, this is the same thing as writing, well, because the wolf is a function of time, but it's also a function of the rabbit population, and the rabbit population is a function of time as well. So what we could do is write this in terms of the chain rule. So this is the same thing as writing dw over dr, so the rate of change of the wolf population in terms of the rabbit, times it by the rate of change of the rabbit by the chain rule, then over time like this. And you can learn more, put a video link below on this kind of chain rule stuff. So now that we have this, what we can do now is move this whole term, so this whole term onto this side, and then what we end up getting is a uh, d, yes, yeah, so then we have a dw over dt, and then we can combine this all into yeah, then this side here, dr over dt, like that. So we have a dw over dt, this equals to, now this term, dw over dr. And we already know what these two are, dw and dt, those are just the equations that we were uh, initially started off with. So this one, dr over dt and dw over t. So this is those two terms, so we could just throw those in there, so the dw over dt, this equals two, if we might remember, 0 0.02w plus 0 0.00002 rw, all over, all divided by, and now we have this first one is gonna be 0.08r, that's the dr over dt, minus, and then if I remember, 0 0.001, R W. So there is our term for dw over dr. Yeah, so now that we have this over here, uh, yeah, that's the, the term for dw over dr. So now what we can do is go over part C, which is the interesting part of this. So it states, draw a direction field for the resulting differential equation in the rw uh, plane. So this time we're dealing with rw as opposed to uh, the time function. So this is a pretty interesting kind of graph we'll get to. And then it says then use a direction field to sketch some solution curves. So let's go over here. Yeah, so here I've uh, written, I've, I've graphed this out using an online um, 
direction field calculator and you can learn more about direction fields in my earlier video and I'll put that in the video link below but if you go to this link it's a cool calculator so I put the link on this so you can see these in the notes and this is uh, this one's dealing with well you can't have the R and W terms let's just use T and Y for this assume that Y is W and T is R and then when you just graph this out I set these up like that and we get a giant direction field like this and I have this up to 3000 or 3 this is just 3 times 10 to the power of 3 like that so we get something that looks like this. this is a pretty cool calculator so I'll just make a note here note W in this case is equal to I mean Y is equal to W and then this this uh, T right there, T is equal to R. So we're, we're not dealing with a time function, it's a different function. Let's put this uh, equal to like that, so it's not the same one as above. And now, so this is the direction for, for that, and I'll just change the terms here. This is W, and then the X axis or the T axis is R, like that. And this, this is 3000, this just uses a different term, this is 2700 etc like that and that's how it looks like so we get this cool direction field again each point each of these lines represents the slope at that point in the RW plane so let's start drawing these curves it states draw a couple first if you notice that something that's interesting is at this very point right here is where it's it's circling everything's circling around this point in fact if you go all the way down here this is actually the 1000 point and then on this left side we have it it goes all the way to 80 so this is the equilibrium point that we actually calculated which is pretty cool like that and now if you were to draw some random uh, curves if you start off here as you can see and then move to the right it's curving up so we just follow where these direction fields are taking us so we get something that looks like that let's say we start off over here so it curves like that, let's start above, it's a bit easier to see for me. So it goes like this, and following it through, something like that. I just uh, skipped too much there. Anyways, if you start somewhere like this, as you can see, everything is just looping around. This is pretty cool. And also, let's get a bigger one, like that. So it just looks generally something like that. I just I just uh, rushed it out a bit, but yeah, as you can see, it just it's a loop like that. Yeah. So from here, I notice that the curves appear to be close in the sense that uh, yeah, closed, not close, closed in the sense that if we travel along a curve, we always return to the same point, which is quite interesting. So if you're here, as you can see, it's it's the the slopes are curving down and down, and then eventually you get back to this point, so whatever you start off, so it's a clue, closed loop, and also notice that the point 1080 is is inside all of the, yeah, is inside, inside all the solution curves, in other words, yeah, it's, it's the center of every single one of them, or at the very point there, and that point is, uh, it's called the equilibrium point, because it corresponds to the equilibrium solution, R equals 1000, W equals 80, which we just calculated, and, and uh, just a note here, when we represent solutions of a system of differential equations as in the direction field above, so the solutions there, we refer to the RW plane uh, as the phase plane, so that's our xy axis graph there, and we call the solutions themselves the phase trajectories. So this whole thing is a phase plane at the RW plane, and then each of these individual uh, curves are the phase trajectories, which is interesting. So a phase trajectory is a path traced out by solutions R, W as time goes, and a phase portrait is another term, it consists of equilibrium points and typical phase trajectories. So this includes the points, and this one is just the trajectories. So just some random terms, uh, I think we'll be using those in the future videos, so keep those in mind. So it's a pretty interesting thing, you could also check out these calculators, pretty cool. Anyways, that's all for today. If you followed along, some pretty interesting stuff on the population interdependency of different prey predator system, which is pretty cool. Anyways, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.